Good evening, friends. The best way to prevent the infection is to know about their life cycle patterns so that we can interrupt the life cycle at, a, at an appropriate places or appropriate timings. How the animals are getting infected and which are the points which can be then tackled to control these infections. Regarding fasciola, as you all know, they are present in the liver or in the bile duct. The eggs are voided in the feces, which are microscopic. You cannot see them. The, under suitable climatic conditions, these eggs hatch and the larval stages come out and then they enter into the body of the snail. All the snails do not act as intermediate hosts, but certain species of snails, aquatic snails or amphibious snails, act as intermediate hosts. And then there is a development inside the body of the snail, which takes around four and a half to seven weeks, depending upon the climatic conditions. Eventually, the circarial stages are released from the snail. They insist on the grass blade and these stages are called as metacircarial stages and sheep, goat, cattle and buffaloes acquire infection by grazing on the contaminated pasture by consuming these metacircarial stages. So that is how they acquire the infection. Okay, now let me talk about the tapeworm. I have taken the example of the most common and that is Munisia expansa, which is present in the small intestine and the gravid proglottids are voided in the feces. These uh, proglottids appear like a boiled rice particles. Eventually, these proglottids disintegrate and the eggs are released, and these eggs are consumed by oribatid mites. Now, oribatid mites are present in every type of soil. You can collect the soil sample from your backyard, and you will find one or the other species of oribatid mite in the sample. Of course, all the species do not act as intermediate hosts, but uh, about 28 different species, uh, they act as intermediate hosts for Munisia and other tapeworms. That is how oribatid mites act as intermediate hosts, where in the infective stages develop, and uh, sheep and goat acquire infection by consuming these oribatid mites. Now, these oribatid mites have a typical tendency. During early part of the day, that is early in the morning or late in the evening, these mites, they migrate on the grass blades because there are dew drops. And you will appreciate, you will realize that these are the timings when the animals are usually let loose for grazing. And that is how they readily become infected with uh, the oribatid mites containing infective stages of monesia and other tapeworms. Coming to hemonchus, which are present in the abomasum, and there they produce large number of eggs which are voided in the feces within 24 to 48 hours, mostly under suitable climatic conditions. When I say suitable climatic conditions, that means the temperature hovering around 25 to 30 degrees and the relative humidity is more than 70%. So that is the ideal condition for the free living parasitic stages to develop. So these eggs hatch within 24 to 48 hours within such conditions. And then the larval L1 stages or first stage larvae come out, they are converted to L2, they are converted to L3. And these L3 stages are the infective stages. So when these L3 stages are swallowed by the animal, they become infected. And again, these L3 stages are also very clever in the sense that they also migrate on the grass blade early in the morning and late in the evening so that they are available for sheep and goats to pick them up and then the life cycle be continued in the final host.